Hi there, welcome to another episode of UENPD TV. My name is Danny Sloan, and today we're going to be talking with our professional development team about their experience at USET 2019. All right, guys. So we attended USET last week. There were some new and exciting changes. First of all, new venue down in Provo, and we had some new and exciting sessions, which were the poster sessions. So what were your thoughts about the new venue and the new formats? So I really liked it down there. I wasn't quite sure, of course, we've been used to the U for the past few years, but um, I thought once you got used to the building, it was nice that everything was all in one place. It was um, even, I took Front Runner down the first day and took that shuttle bus over, and I, like, I just thought all of that was really slick. It, it was nice to not have to deal with parking. So anyway, I mean, overall, I thought it, I thought it was good. I thought it was nice that it was all contained. Did you get your I went green to you set 19 it's button? It's on my backpack right now. <laughs> That's fabulous. Never Way it off. to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be impossible to find the absolute perfect location to hold a conference right. for all point. the teachers in USET uh, in Utah. But that was pretty close because there wasn't a lot of traffic on the highway going down there. There were alternative means of transportation and that conference was uh, conference center was very easy to get to and park. So I was happy with it and Good. walking into the keynote and seeing that huge open area with Alex Rose band playing, Alex from Salt Lake City, yeah, I felt like I was awesome. at uh, yeah. Baby ISTE. <laughs> it well, it did feeling. have that vibe, <laughs> right? It was super fun, yeah. Yeah. They did a great yeah. job with that this year. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we had poster sessions this year, which were different. They were housed in the playground, which we've had for a few years, which is always an exciting place to be. But the poster sessions were kind of like uh, mini science fairs almost, where you could go up and interact with these teachers who were doing specific things. And what did you guys think of the posters? I really enjoyed being able to be one-on-one -on -one with some of the teachers to interact with them and they can kind of, you know, talk to you individually about stuff that you were interested in instead of having to learn through a whole session about a certain topic, you can kind of pick and choose what you really wanted to get from each thing. Right, mm -hmm. so instead of sitting through an mm -hmm. hour presentation where you get one thing, you can kind of go up, ask exactly. them about exactly what you're interested exactly. in. Mm -hmm. And I like the freedom of, if you do have a very specific question that maybe you wouldn't ask in a whole group session because you realize it only applies to you, <laughs> in a poster session it's easy to say, well in my classroom these are the limitations I have and do you have any ideas of how you would make what you're doing work? And I, yeah, so I, I like that. And then it can be a 10 minute conversation and then you're on to something else where it's also very relevant to what you're doing, so. Yeah, and if you're giving a poster session, it's kind of fun because I know Rob gave a poster session on developing an iPad app and how to do that. Mm -hmm. And it really just gives you a chance to be one-on-one -on -one with another teacher and show them in detail what you did. So I'd like that opportunity yeah, with that. Yeah, absolutely. I always enjoy the poster sessions when I'm at ISTE. And so that was a big pull of why we brought it to you set. So I'm glad it seemed successful. What about the playground? Did anyone get to spend any time in the playground? They had a giant cardboard <laughs> castle at one point mm -hmm. that then turned into an airplane. What did you think? Yeah, it was pretty magical. I was there in the playground. I had a playground session when they were tearing it down, which ah. was also quite fun. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't, yeah, it was um, a bombardment of the castle. It wasn't like a neat takedown yeah. of this cardboard castle. No, they I had. think they gave them like a minute to do mm -hmm. it. Like, yeah. ready, set, go. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, I thought there was a lot of great hands-on stuff. There were, I mean, I feel like even just walking around, even some, like some of the vendors that were there just had some really good practical information right away. And again, I, I love it. I feel like so often we, like, we tell our teachers, like, you have grants available for this and for this and for this. And, but so many times our teachers don't really know, like, okay, for robotics, awesome. I don't know what these robots do, or I don't know how they'll work. And I like the playground session where they can not only talk to someone about it, but actually play with some of these things and get a feel for, could I make this work in my classroom? Is it worth the work of this grant? So I don't know, I, I think that's really valuable. Absolutely. The playground's also a great venue to see students in action. So when you can walk around and see some of the makerspace projects they've made or the robotics and the coding that they're using and then see teachers learning from the kids, that's so powerful. It's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. It's so powerful for the kids, but also for our teachers to see these kids in action. And that's a part of learning that I think we forget a lot is that, you know, the learning process for students, what we want them to do more of is present what they've learned and that gives them a great opportunity to do so and a good audience to, to mm -hmm. do it with. So I like that part of it as a learning process. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. That's an authentic assessment rather than like the kids showing us what they know. Show us what you can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's maybe talk about the presentations that we gave at this year's ISTE conference. Um, I was lucky enough to present on using tech to unplug, which kind of seems a little bit backwards, but um, I was giving ways that you can gain back your day or time throughout your day using different tech tools um, like Doodle, for example, or Rescue Time or Boomerang in email, also some meditation apps. Mm -hmm. And then I also presented on digital citizenship, which we have a couple digital citizenship classes. So that was exciting. Is that what, what you? you're doing at your desk, meditating? Yes, I'm just, <laughs> that's what I do now. <laughs> I'm gaining time, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> my, my presentation was on technology-ready teachers, and some of the messages I've been hearing over and over during the last few months is um, what are employers looking for and how are we preparing our students for that? Mm -hmm. And so I really believe in the next four to five years, technology is going to be taking a huge role in education, transforming it even more than we've seen lately. I was reading just an article last night um, that uh, Darren Draper posted on Twitter about 5G and how that's gonna revolutionize education and a different type of content. I have a friend who is in the AI business mm -hmm. and, and in my presentation I've talked about how that's gonna change um, the jobs that are gonna be available in the future. Um, this this one job was an AI that completely generated a person from scratch, not just photoshopping it, but was able to put down, draw a person, and I had the people guess which one was a real person, which one was a fake person by the AI, and no one could tell. Hmm. So that's what my class was about, and I kind of pivoted that with, you know, the classes we offer at UEN that teachers could take to help them prepare. To, um, to be ready for the technology boom, which I still think there's a big boom coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, my session was on Utah's online library, mm -hmm. and it's interesting, you know, I've, I've worked at UEN almost three years now, but I was using Pioneer Library back in the classroom when it was Pioneer Library, and I think every year I kind of think, oh, are there gonna be that many people in this? Like, everybody knows about this at this point, right? Mm -hmm. But I there were probably, 80 people in the session and um, lots of really good questions and lots of, um, you know, you could see some people who are active users already who are just looking for additional ideas, but you could also see people where this was new to them. And I think there are some really phenomenal resources in Utah's online library. And the fact that there's, they are just free, like not free to a point, but just free. I, like I just think every teacher needs to know about it. So I was excited to see that many people in the, in the session. That's awesome. That's really awesome. So I had a poster presentation on Badger, which is a uh, micro-credentialing tool in Canvas, and I was really surprised how much I enjoyed doing a poster session, because I had been expecting to do a lecture on that, and realized about 30 seconds into the poster session, this is the better format. And uh, <laughs> so I'm excited to yeah. put in specifically for a poster session next year. Uh, that's good to hear that you had a good experience with I liked it. it a lot. And then I had a, uh, a one-hour presentation on shifting culture in the school using Canvas. Okay. And it was designed for administrators to think about ways they could use Canvas uh, to flip faculty meetings or to do online book studies mm -hmm. uh, and use tools like that to get uh, their teachers experiencing the positives of Canvas before they start using it with their students. And that provides more buy-in and more acceptance mm -hmm. of the LMS. Absolutely. I think if you can get people using a tool as a student, mm -hmm. they do have more of that buy-in as a teacher when they're ready to switch over to utilizing an LMS in that way. Yeah. Um, all right. What about the best thing that you learned at USET? Do you have a new tool or trick that you learned and you just are obsessed with? Wow. So I went to the Google Slam session. Oh, and yeah. Mm -hmm. I learned quite a bit there. I like that format because they pre-recorded five minutes of them uh, showing off different skills. Okay. And I think it was Pam Turley who won. She did. Yeah. I and saw her right after and she was still yeah. glowing from her win. <laughs> yeah, but like it was like, let me find just the best thing that no one's ever seen before in there. And I learned a lot of things. And so I, from hers, one of the tricks that I learned was um, you could take a spreadsheet and put line items in the spreadsheet and that could go to the calendar. Oh. And I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. 
And then I also like the one that Jared Covili presented, and it was um, using the, the notes. What's the note app? Google Keep. Google Keep. He took a picture of uh, like a pa piece of paper, and then it took all the words from that and put it into Google Keep. So it like... As editable as text. As editable text. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, okay. I thought I knew everything. You guys know that, but <laughs> I didn't know that. So those are the couple things that I really enjoyed seeing with Google. That's awesome. My favorite session was uh, Dr. Christy Kane's session on um, kind of how like unplugging from technology and how to like incorporate better things into your day. And one of her things was giving hugs for eight seconds each. So eight hugs a day for eight seconds each is supposed to kind of help your like brain levels to bring you back up to, I don't know, normal, I guess, yeah. to help you. <laughs> yeah. Just help you kind of unplug and recharge. Like connect with another mm -hmm. human or animal. Yeah. I give my dogs eight second that hugs. Counts. Does that count? Animals absolutely count. Well, I was just gonna say, I don't know, like there were a lot of good things that I learned. Just what, um, from uh, Steve Weller, the keynote on the second day, he just threw up one idea. It was a story, what was it? It was a book report, I think, was it on Tale of Despero? But it yes. was, it, you had to, it was just in a hundred emojis. You had to, and it was <laughs> only emojis. And I kind, of, I kind of loved that idea. Like, no, I mean, our students need to learn how to write. Like, that can't be a substitute completely. But I love the idea of just using these tiny little graphics. How do you represent an entire book, an entire novel? So anyway, I was like, I might make one of my online classes do that at some point. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I mean, I like kind it. of embracing some of the technology that our students use that we as adults may see as silly, mm -hmm. but I mean, not me. I love my emojis. <laughs> yeah, not you. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I thought that was fun. Cody Spendlove from the Alpine District hosted a panel that I attended at the very last session mm -hmm. of the second day. And it was so refreshing because there were five or six ed techs sitting up at the front of the room. The projector never turned on. There was no technology out at all, and it was just an open discussion of people talking about the challenges we face in our job as uh, jobs as instructional technology trainers and mm -hmm. how we overcome them, how we build trust with teachers. Uh, it was fantastic, and That's I would awesome. love to see more of that type of forum mm -hmm. at uh, at USET, especially that time of day, like late in the afternoon when your brain's kind of fried and you feel like you've learned as much as you can learn. Yeah. To be able to sit down and talk to people, it was a great time. I really like that because. I think it's funny at a tech conference that all of us have mentioned at least one session mm -hmm. yeah, that was unplugged yeah, so or about unplugging. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's something we're definitely craving as ed techs, as teachers, as educators, as humans is mm -hmm. to get back to some of like the pre-tech things. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's a time when you need technology. Yeah, you don't absolutely. Need technology, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that's at the top of people's minds is like, how do we use technology efficiently, but also what are some good ways to not use technology? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's interesting in that conversation because I would say a challenge of ed techs and directors is being too connected. Like it's hard to get anything done because you're constantly getting a phone call or you're constantly getting a text or an email of saying, you need to handle this, you need to handle this. And so I, th I think it was interesting that it was a setting where it was like, put everything away so we can mm -hmm. just focus on this. So anyway. Those kind of sessions are really nice and recharging. Mm -hmm. um, one of the favorite things that I learned was actually very techy, but it was something that I didn't ever know how to do in Google Sheets, how to freeze that top row. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> it has changed That's my so life. Nice, right? I like, <laughs> always admired spreadsheets that could do that because it's like such a useful thing. But I also learned a lot more about Google Sheets from um, Ian Davey and Adam McMickle in Ogden oh, District. They had a said. session. It was awesome. Yeah. But I always hear like Sheets isn't as powerful as Excel and blah, blah, blah. But they were talking about all the formulas and how to find the formulas. So mm. if you type in an equal sign into a cell, it gives a little dot in the corner of the cell and it gives you so much information <laughs> on how to start writing those formulas. So. I learned a lot, including how to freeze that top thing. Well, don't, <laughs> Life keep, us, wow. don't keep us in suspense. How do you freeze the so top So all you have to do, you, no, all you have to do is just like take a little boop in the corner of a top cell. This really oh, looks works better with a projector, nice. and then you just drag it down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe we can like screenshot that uh, if yeah. anyone really wants to know. You can freeze the cell, you can freeze the row, you can yes. freeze the column. Yes. Nice. It's like life changing, you guys. Well, you know, sheets happen. <laughs> Their session was called Oh Sheet. 
Oh. <laughs> the name it? drew me in. Yeah. <laughs> Got my attention. All right, uh, let's talk about the keynotes. So we had two very different keynotes that you set this year. Day one, we had Joe Sanfilippo. He is a um, superintendent for Fall Creek Schools in Wisconsin, hashtag go crickets. And he was talking about teachers sharing their stories. And then on day two, we had Steve Weller, who is a local educator who talked a lot about how he connects with his students by drawing comics. So what did you guys think of the keynotes this year? I loved both of the keynotes. I think I was the first person to give a standing ovation for Joe's keynote. <laughs> and there was just so many quotes. Like I was writing down quotes as fast as I could. Like yeah, I, he was I a had quote quotes machine. right here that I mm -hmm. wrote down, like, oh that's awesome, that's awesome. So I was putting all this on Twitter. It was really good. And it was super energizing and I think it was a perfect way to kick off the conference. Mm -hmm. And I also liked um, Steve's because it was different, it was more visual for me mm -hmm. because he's sharing his comics. But I also liked how he was sharing his story, and that's what the conference was about. Like how he got into doing the comics and how that's influenced his teaching and how that's influenced the students. And I had a personal experience um, when I was talking to him afterwards. I didn't know this before, but he had in, an interaction with my son. His mother was a teacher at the same school as my mother, and then he was at the school. And my son got three of his comic books, and that really helped him uh, learn to read and like reading. That's cool. so cool. So it was a nice personal connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I started following his Instagram page because every day he posts a new mm -hmm. education or teacher or student centric comic and he's hilarious. And I did get him on Twitter. Ah. So oh, I couldn't find him, him on Twitter. On, he just joined like two days ago. Well, there you go. <laughs> I was his second follower. Good job. Follower. Congratulations. So he's got like 20 followers on yeah. Instagram, I think. 20,000. 20,000. Followers on Instagram. Yeah. And then we couldn't and, find him on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. And then a few on Twitter. But yeah, I'm, look, I'm seeing more of the comics now because I'm not an Instagram person yet. Ah, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, I really do. I liked Joe's message a lot. I am. Um, I think so many times, like when we talk about social media, um, especially like in the media, it seems like it's typically in a very negative way that social media is portrayed. Right. Like it's talking about like how it's linked to like depression in, in our youth and all these different negative things. And it, But it was interesting to watch how he uses social media to make very real connections, like human to human connections. And he kind of shared some experiences of how he, um, like, you know, connecting with what that like 85 year old man at the football game that never would have, you know, that that wouldn't have been a conversation he had beforehand. So I don't know, I thought, I thought it was cool how he was using social media to enhance in-person relationships, not to replace any of that. Right, so. exactly. He was having anyone who could come up to him at a football game and say what the school's mission was, they would keep, they would get some swag. And it was a t-shirt or something, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And um, I thought it was great that everything tied back to that mission because I think so often in organizations or school districts or schools, we take all of this time and thought to come up with a mission statement, what we do, but no one after that meeting really <laughs> knows what it is. And right. so he would always bring it back to that they're there for the kids and what is their mission statement. Mm -hmm. And the way he was connecting was amazing. Mm -hmm. they, had, they have these crazy ice storms and everyone's power went out, but the high school or the school, it's a K-12 school, um, has a generator. And so just letting the people know, like, hey, if your food's going bad in your refrigerator, you can come use ours. And he said he didn't get a lot of no, not a lot of people took him up on that offer, but they felt so close and so connected and so cared for because he just put that out there. Mm -hmm. He was all about talking about creating moments and sharing those moments. And that's really important in education and just life because like sharing moments and those memorable experiences are really attached to our emotions. And we remember a lot of that as human beings. And so I think if you can share that with others, it's a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And he, he talked about teachers not minimizing what they are and not saying, I'm just a teacher, but saying that I'm a teacher. And mm -hmm. because a lot of times if we put that just in there, it really minimizes what we do and the impact that we have mm -hmm. on our community and our students and everyone really. Yeah. I like how USET has continued to have a local keynoter, mm -hmm. uh, usually on the second day. And 
you know, that sort of differentiates USET from a big educational conference. It keeps its local flair and flavor, and I like to see that continue with bringing in USET. I liked that as well. Mm -hmm. I think it can be really someone that you connect to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This has been an awesome conversation. So thank you guys for taking part in USET every year and for your first year and for <laughs> having this chat with us today. And thank you, Danny. You did an awesome job. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us with another UEN PD TV. Now, if you'd like more information about USET, go ahead and head to USET.org. And to join one of our classes, go to UEN.org slash development. We'll see you in class.